Hi there, hope you had a nice Christmas and got lots of nice presents and are looking forward to a happier new year than the one we're in at the moment. A bit of good news, an early Christmas present for Commodore 64 fans was that Lemon64, the website, came back online just before Christmas. So that was great news. That means I can now do my game review comparison, looking at my game reviews compared to Lemon64 and Zap64. So let's head over to my computer and do that right now. Right then, so as always, we'll start with looking at my spreadsheet where I record all my games and the reviews. Uh, I had to make a decision whether to review the 12 games I've actually reviewed since the last time I did one of these comparison videos or just the 10 that I would have done had Lemon64 been available at the time I wanted to do this comparison and I decided to do that I've gone with the 10 that I originally would have done rather than add the other two that I've done since in as well so here's the list of games as you can see you've got the name of the games and all the other stuff on there the scores on the right hand side uh, and the first of the games that I reviewed from this batch of 10 was Pitfall so let's head over to the recently restored Lemon64 and take a look at Pitfall. So here's Pitfall, or to give it its full name, Pitfall, Pitfall Harry's Jungle Adventure. Uh, originally an Activision release, obviously re-released by Firebird. I gave this a score of 5.9. And as you can see, Lemon64 users, they gave it a score of 7.3. I think there's probably a bit of nostalgia involved there with people who had the Commodore 64 from an early time. Um, lots of comments here about the game, 22 comments. Uh, let's just see if we can pick out anything particularly interesting. There's a bit of an argument about what the best version is, whether it's the C64 or the Atari. Um, just trying to find... There we go, Pitfall Commodore 64 version is not awful, it's pretty good and relatively close to the original but as someone mentioned the Scorpion is almost impossible, making this version worse plus the colours are not right either and I think I said all that in my review as well so I agree totally with that review there. There are some very uh, detailed and comprehensive reviews of this game by the users on Lemon64 if you want to take a look at them all, which I won't but there's another notable thing here which is that there's no link to a Zap review and that's because there wasn't one. Uh, the original game was obviously released before Zaps started to be published and they never got around to reviewing the re-release um, but handily this user Sheldon Cooper um, who records all the game review scores from all the different magazines uh, on virtually every review on Lemon64 he obviously spends a lot of time doing this uh, he notes that there's some reviews of it in your Commodore so we're going to sub in a Your Commodore review for a Zap review on this occasion. And we're going to look at this one, I think it is, from December 87. So here's a scan of Your Commodore, that issue 39. Uh, and you can see the presentation of the magazine compared to Zap is very different. It, it's quite dull in comparison and also using a very horrible gradient colour scheme on this particular page. Uh, but let's zoom it in a little bit and take a look at the review. So this is actually a review of both games and it is a review of the re-releases by Firebird. So it goes into a lot of information about the two games, the fact that Firebird have brought the rights and re-released them. Um, so here's the bit about Pitfall 1. In Pitfall 1 you find yourself in a jungle full of traps. Now what amused me about this review is somewhere along here he starts to talk about the scorpions and i can't find it now there they are scorpions are also a hindrance as these home in on you and are quite hard to avoid which we know is definitely a fact about the game but he spelled scorpions wrong so clearly there wasn't very good proofreading uh, at this point or no one knew how to spell scorpions uh, at your commodore at this point in time um so it does go on to give various bit review information very much different to the zap ones with no box outs or anything like that this is just a review by one person um, so yeah, it doesn't really um, show a great deal of review about it. It's more just telling you about what it's about, the game's about. So um, at the end, it does say in these era, these games were wonderful. At the 199, they represent good value. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily agree with that. And the scores here, again, we don't have an overall score like you get in Zap. Um, you, they just give the scores on graphics, originality, playability and value. So I think the most important one there is playability, which is 6 out of 10, which is very close to my 5.9. And that's the one I'm going to be using at the end of this video for my comparison between the three sets of reviews. I'm going to convert that to 60% to make it comparable to the kind of scores that Zap would give. 
Uh, so there we go. That's Pitfall. Not quite the normal thing, but nice to look at another magazine and, and see basically that it's very poor looking compared to Zap 64. So the next game I reviewed was Cauldron. So let's take a look at Cauldron and I gave this a rating of 6.4. Lemon users have given it 7.1, so not too different. A few comments here. Only a masochist would want to play this game with a drastically reduced difficulty level. And I do mean drastically. It would be an okay arcade adventure, but still nothing earth shattering. As it is now, it's just unplayable and couldn't argue too much with that. Really nice graphics, especially the little house. The game looked even better in magazines. Uh, sadly, it's all let down by unreliably difficult gameplay. So yeah, basically a lot of people agreeing with me that um, or I agree with them would be more accurate that um, the difficulty really ruins this game. So um, let's have a look at the Zap review. It's a nice two page review from issue one, the very first issue of Zap in May 1985. So two page review, some nice screenshots, some nice stuff about the layout, how the screen works and everything, the wraparound. Um, sections and also the underground level so let's have a look at the scores as you can see they gave it an overall score of 87 percent um it's a good presentation originality basically everything got good scores small but colorful detailed and well animated graphics i'd agree with that the urge to explore is very strong is fair um sound they didn't really give any information about that stacks of locations and a tough long-term challenge i think that's an understatement and they really did give it a high rating. I think they, at the time, it was probably quite an outstanding looking game and they, they forgave the difficulty a little bit. So one of the comments here, you can see a large plane area will take some time to complete. Uh, obtaining the ingredients and utilizing them correctly is fairly difficult. Mapping isn't really worth doing above ground. Uh, definitely an enjoyable challenge to novice and proficient arcade adventurer alike. I think a novice would really struggle with it. Uh, let's just go back and have a look at a couple of the other reviewer comments this marvelous cross between defender and a platform game should be a winner for palace uh, plenty of difficulty scrolling landscape is wonderful as are the monsters below ground the action doesn't let up and either section would qualify as a decent game in his own right together they're great and just let's look at the other one on the first page julian rignall there saying at last a great arcade adventure so we 64 owners can boast our own against the specky crowd uh, initially had some problems with the witch's control but perseverance has its reward so yeah plenty of comments positive comments across the board really it was then reviewed again when it was released at budget price so let's just take a look at that review it's only a short one this time just a, a small couple of paragraphs uh, basically it says graphically sonically and gameplay wise it's an excellent blend of two game types but i grab that it's a bit too hard and that's exactly what i would say also uh, they give it on the re-release version 81 percent so that's the score i'm going to use on my final comparison still a little bit higher than the 6.4 i gave it or the score that the lemon users gave it so let's move on to the third game which was international speedway Okay, so here's the page for International Speedway, which I gave a score of 5.6. Lemon users have gone with 5.9, so virtually identical to what I did. Not a lot of user comments here. Could have been better. Nice little budget racer. Nice game. Brilliant game. Nice graphics and nice sound. That's a bit of an exaggeration, I would say. It's a stay up all night game. Not really. It was a pretty short lived game, in my opinion. Um, so let's take a look at the Zap review. They gave it 49%. Only a short review here again. Uh, motorbikes go fast. That's a useful piece of information, isn't it? Uh, there isn't really a great deal you can do with a speedway game since it's just going round and round the oval track, and that's the major failing of international speedway. Not enough variety. It's race round. Look at the scores. Race round again. Not that bad, really. Just boring, which is pretty much what I said. And they gave it a score of 49%, which, again, is not too different to what I gave it. Uh, but also, I found that this game seemed to get a review a lot later in an issue of Zap from 1992. January 92 there's a review of it here which suggests it was going to be re-released by Codemasters at £3.99 uh, you can see it's a screenshot there from the same game and in this re-release version or this version that there was going to be released by Codemasters it gave they gave it a score of 58 percent it's reasonably playable for a while but I still think Speedway is dull 
Um, so very similar review. But what's interesting is, as far as I know, this never got released by Codemasters. There's no evidence out there on the internet of it being released in Codemasters packaging. So a bit of an interesting that it was submitted for a review and it was a game that was already about four years old at that point um, and then never got released. I guess Codemasters realized it was not very good as well. So anyway, that's an interesting sort of side note. That's International Speedway, not much more to say about that. So let's move on to the next game review. And next up we have the Willow Pattern, the Willow Pattern Adventure to give it its full name. And I gave this a score of 5.7. Lemon users have been a bit more generous. They've given it a score of 7.7. .7. Uh, there are a few comments here about this being identical to Treasure Island. You can see there uh, the mini game has been re relocated but basically the same game. Uh, is this not a remake of Treasure Island? Yes, it is. Um, so yeah, a few people saying, as I mentioned in the review, that it's a, a reskin, if you like, of Treasure Island. Um, overall, the comments are quite positive. Nice atmosphere and beautiful music. With the save game option, this is a must try. I assume that means if you play it on emulator, you could save it. Uh, personally, they, I think it was nowhere near as good as a lot of those reviews are making out. So let's take a look at the Zap review. Uh, they gave it 60% which is a lot closer to what I gave it. Um, not a very nice looking review here, it's all in black and white. This is actually a review of the earlier version that came out that cost £3.95. And then as I said in the review it was re-released for £1.99 in the more traditional silver range packaging. So uh, let's have a look at the review scores then. Uh, colourful but sometimes crude gra scenery and sprites, that's the graphics, 71%. 68% for the sound effective use of oriental style music um, some original gameplay elements but not enough to hold interest for any length of time cheaper than your average arcade adventure in this case you get what you pay for and overall they gave it 60 percent saying not the best of this type of game available but sufficiently cheap to merit to look and maybe if they'd re-reviewed it at 199 they might have given it a slightly more favorable review still in terms of the user comments uh, let's just take a look at the julian rignall one uh, Willow Pattern's most attractive feature is its graphics. They're pretty and incredibly like Tom Minton's Willow Pattern design. He was the one who designed the original plates in 1785. So my mum, who has massive knowledge of antiques, informed me. Uh, it has some problems but lacks decent sound variety and something extra to make it a bit special. It also suffers from looking and playing like Saber Wolf, which I think I mentioned in my review. Uh, it would have been better priced at 250 as the 395 asking price seems a little too high so i imagine he would have been happier when it was re-released at one pound 99. so i think that's all we need to see about the willow pattern zap rated it fairly similar to me so let's move on to the next review so the next game i reviewed was collapse which i gave a score of 7.1 lemon users not quite so generous they've gone with 6.1 um, not many comments here. One of the first puzzle games of my life and pretty difficult to. It seems like a weird domino rally. I suppose that's fair. Um, not really any other review comments. I'm too restless yet to get into another of these action puzzlers. I found it quite a good game um, and I would even go as far as to say it was worth more than the 7.1 score that I gave it. Uh, and Zap64 agreed because they gave it 85% in issue 18, October 1986. It does confirm, as I said in my review, that Zen, the character, is a mole and not a bear. Um, in terms of the review scores, you can see graphics did not get a good rating, quite dull and lacking in colour, 27%. Sound also quite poor, but it, the key scores that really give it the overall rating are the hook ability and last ability uh, and value for money, all 80 plus, and giving it the overall score of 85%. The cheapest arcade puzzler available and definitely one of the best. Um, so a couple of comments. Puzzle Freaks will love this and but people who like their action in a different form won't. It's one of those types of games where you can see quite clearly what you have to do but try and work out how to do it. Didn't really make a lot of sense. It's a good laugh but not what I would call inspiring stuff. The graphics and sound are pretty grotty but there's a game here and it's one that's worth looking into if you're into arcade puzzles. Gary Penn, I think that is, says this looks dreadful and I wasn't too impressed on playing for the first time. However, several games later I was hooked and couldn't leave the game alone. It's a simple but highly addictive arcade puzzle and I love it. That's exactly what I would say about the game too. Collapse is a worthy purchase at only two quid. So yeah, nice review of Collapse. Not very good looking review in terms of the screenshot there. Very blurry. 
but I guess Zap did what they could at the time give the technology available so let's move on to the next game I reviewed and that was Mermaid Madness which I gave a score of 5.5 Lemon users have gone a little bit higher with 6.5 some interesting comments here <laughs> when did Ron Jeremy die his hair blonde and become an 8-bit mermaid uh, despite the nasty looking character sprite this game wasn't too bad I, I beg to differ the ugliest mermaid I've ever seen but the game was okay mm, wasn't really okay it was pretty average at best never liked this much and I'm pretty sure that quote on the front from Zap didn't come from their review um, funny game but much too short the puzzles are quite easy except one thing I do rescue the diver but he keeps escaping well he got further than me I never rescued the diver so there you go um, so yeah quite a few comments there <laughs> last one here the game is bizarre you play a mermaid trying to save a reluctant human lover the music is great but the puzzles i.e where do i go next cause me to get never get very far it is frustrating yeah i'd agree with that as well so the comments are mainly saying it's pretty good but i don't think i'd necessarily agree with that well in fact i don't <laughs> so anyway let's move on to the zap review and they were even more complimentary about it they gave it 78 percent which i think is just absolutely crazy especially as this was for the full price 9.99 version not the budget version um so a few comments here graphics lots of fishy characters along with the gruesome twosome and they're all nicely drawn and animated yeah the graphics weren't bad three nice tunes which jolly you along in the sound again the sound wasn't too bad but here they're saying the nature of the game gives instant appeal but not the urge to play for ages and ages and yet they've gave a last ability of 74 percent which is quite a high score also says value for money is a bit over the odds considering there's nothing exceptional on offer and then in the end it goes with 78 percent saying if you like arcade adventures then this is worthy of your attention um so yeah bit contradictory there but um i wasn't impressed with this one at all they seem to have liked it a bit more than i did so let's just have a quick look at one of the reviewer comments what appeals to me most about this rather run-of-the-mill arcade adventure is the superb scenario around which the game is based really <laughs> it's really not that superb it really does make the game more play enjoyable to play although it does become tiresome after many hours on off play strange comment otherwise it's a fairly simple affair with pretty graphics and a nice soundtrack but it really should be cheaper so i imagine they would have rated the re-release of this even higher uh, but i don't think they ever reviewed it so next up we have Caverns of Ereban which I gave a score of 6.2 and Lemon users pretty much agree with me with a score of 5.8 um, not many comments here but let's see if we can pick out one of the good ones this used to be my favourite game when I was young plenty of fun quite advanced for its time definitely should be including your 64 archive that might be a little bit over the top in the praise but it wasn't bad a good solid budget game not too hard good 8 way scrolling and plenty of scope for just flying around so yeah a couple of nice comments there zap on the other hand though they really didn't rate this game at all they gave it 25 percent which i think is incredibly harsh um bit of a strange layout for the review here uh, because this stuff on the left hand side is from other reviews and then the the uh the text the header is in the middle the text goes down the left hand side here there's a big advert there and then the review scores are in the top right so it's really sort of shoehorned into some available space got a screenshot there it's got a screenshot there but let's move on to the review scores so presentation was nothing to impress graphics the caverns wobble as you trundle around and on the whole the graphics are bland and inspiring seems a bit harsh to me sound was reasonably highly rated hook ability once you see what a mammoth task is ahead you won't want to play it again now if you're anything like good it might be different well yes i suppose it would be if in your opinion cheap but not cheap enough caverns are airborne we wish it would go and get lost there i mean i think that's very harsh it was a tough game and the pixel perfect uh, collision and stuff and uh, getting blown up by just touching anything or getting hit by random shots could get a bit annoying but if you look at the comments here i didn't enjoy playing this game in the slightest and it left me cold that is until i set fire to it seriously though caverns of urban is not the sort of game i would recommend to anyone even alex winton don't know who that is but probably of its time that comment what a horrid game why firebird sent us a review copy i'll never know it's a blast from the past that really should have stayed there and if you see it on a software shelf i advise that you let it stay there even at the el cheapo end of firebird's product range caverns of Ereban represents lousy value for money just keep away from caverns because i doubt you'd like what you find there so yeah they were not impressed at all and i think that was 
a little bit harsh to say the least it was not an amazing game by any means but it was definitely playable and reasonably addictive despite being quite difficult so moving on from that that's two zap reviews in a row i've disagreed with the previous one being mermaid madness so let's move on to the next game which was raging beast i gave this a score of 6.8 and again, Lemon users in very close agreement. They've gone with 7.1 from 55 votes. Um, hilariously original and quirky, says one review there. Many laughs were had playing this game. Some discussion about whether Olay was the same game or not, which it is. Um, still scrolling down, reading about Olay. There's another one there. Simple but effective, genuinely fun, and one of the most original games ever. A must play. This game is much cooler than the real thing. This game is always fun to play. Try it, I know you'll like it. I, yeah, I couldn't agree more with most of those reviews. Uh, very fun to play. A little bit limited in the longevity of it, I think. But it was definitely a fun game. Well programmed and great little graphics as well. So the Zap review. Uh, they probably went a little bit high in my view, but they really liked it it gave it 89 percent a highly entertaining piece of software uh, though simple in appearance the graphics are very well animated especially the bull and work extremely well can't disagree with that one good tunes which suit the game for the sound i wasn't that impressed with the sound it got a bit repetitive but addictive mainly due to the hilarious nature of the game it, although the initial humor wears a bit thin after a while it's still tough and fun to play worth every penny i think you can't argue it's worth one pound 99 so let's have a quick look at the reviewer comments. Raging Beast is a very daft game indeed. The bull is great and really does have character, something I've never seen in a computer game before. And many a time the air turned blue because it decided to sit on me, but such frustration caused me to go back to the game again and again. Love the graphics, adore the gameplay, like the price, get it. Great review, I think. I can't really argue with that too much. Funny game, everything around it is silly, like the bull trying to stomp you into the dirt, the little stretcher bearers. Graphics, although small, are fine, and the bull is portrayed brilliantly. All things that I would agree with. The bull, the animation, and the graphics for the bull were brilliant. So, yeah. Although the subject matter is somewhat controversial, the game itself, um, it was really nicely done. I wouldn't rate it quite as highly as Zap do, but I can't really argue with most of the comments. So, we'll move on to the last couple of games now. And the first of those was Scuba Kids which I gave a score of 7.2, slightly lower score from Lemon, 6.2. Very enjoyable little game. The sound is utterly wonderful. Yeah, it had a really good tune on the title screen. In-game sound was fairly simplistic, though. First game I played on my Commodore 64 back in 1988. Great game, lots of fun. Definitely suited towards the younger player. Scuba Kids is nevertheless a fun game. Pretty standard fair mod by glitchy graphics. There were a few glitches in the graphics, to be fair. Um, but overall I think it was ni nice graphics and reasonably good gameplay although quite simplistic like that comment there said so let's take a look at the zap score and they gave it pretty similar to me as well 66% an amusing little item and worthy of investigation at the price gaudy backdrops but the sprites are adequately designed and animated so 55% for the graphics good atmospheric tunes and bubbly sound effects so good score for the sound uh, quite a playable game so yeah they, normally a little small review for this one with a little screenshot there but reasonably complimentary review the opening music of scuba kids is quite jolly with some appropriate bubbly sounds breaking through at times this compounded the feeling of disappointment when i saw the game graphics i mean pink cave walls do me a favor says whoever this is however perseverance reaped its own rewards and behind that lurid front is it that it projects the game is actually rather playable whether or not it would cut it at full price is questionable but as a budget release you could do worse And again, I mentioned about the tacky graphic appearance there. Um, the gameplay appears outdated and boring, but if you ignore the superficialities, guiding the diver along the seabed, bubbling fish to death, and hunting out keys and sandbanks soon becomes enjoyable. So they weren't impressed at first impressions, but overall they thought it was pretty good. So finally, let's move on to my last of the batch of 10 reviews, Galaxy Birds, a sensible software game. I gave this a score of 6.1. Lemon users, pretty similar again, 5.6. And let's have a look for some comments. I wonder if Zap64 would have been as generous in its review and rating if it had it not been programmed by Sensible Software. Well, we'll get to their review in a minute. 
straightforward shooting effort which the programmers didn't put much thought into didn't take too seriously so yeah that's what i said in my review as well really bad game with annoying music bad gameplay and bad graphics one of the worst commodore games i've played ever you can find better games on your mobile phone <laughs> but then he just going to say we remember we are 20 years after the game was released so yeah he wasn't impressed quite a brutal shooter and not for the faint of heart yeah i'd agree with that uh, so yeah pretty average uh, comments there from the lemon users let's take a look at the zap review for this one and they gave it 60 percent and almost a full page review for a budget game um so unoriginal naff and silly buy it for a laugh two quid isn't really asking much they gave it pretty good score for value for money graphics are good sprites but little else silly tune burbles away during the game and spot effects suit the game well so pretty average scores across the board and they gave it 60 percent i think that's fair i mean it's almost identical to what i gave it if you turn my score into a percentage it'd be 61 percent so let's have a look at the comments to be honest this game is a load of rubbish but it's very enjoyable rubbish and great fun to play plenty of jokes within the program both in the scrolling message on the title screen and the game itself graphics are poor sound is awful but i love it go out and give it a go for two quid it almost seems worth buying i've always thought that firebird were a little on the stupid side and releasing a game as dire as galaxy birds confirms this the programmers must be congratulated on a superb piss take of the whole shoot 'em up genre i mean it's it's a pretty reasonable shoot 'em up it's not very advanced but it does the job um so absurd it's almost worth two quid so yeah pretty much um average sort of slightly above average review basically they're saying it's a simple game but it's good fun for a laugh which is pretty much what i said as well final thing to do as i've always done is to go back to the spreadsheet and take a look at how they rank in comparison between the three different sources so you can see it's pretty varied as is usually the case um I'm, I'm struggling to find any commonality to be honest i mean collapse is pretty well rated between myself and zap but lemon didn't rate it very highly and then you've got raging beast again that's pretty highly rated across all three i suppose with zap rating it most highly me third and uh lemon users fourth cauldrons up there as well fourth for me and third for both zap and lemon mermaid madness is all over the place right at the rock bottom for me right near the top for zap and right in the middle for lemon uh scuba kids again in the middle for zap and lemon but up the top for me pitfall quite low for myself and zap oh sorry not zap in that case it was actually your commodore uh, but then it's right near the top for lemon as is willow pattern which i've got near the bottom and so is zap but then lemon users have got it right near the top so all you can say is that we all agreed to disagree on pretty much everything this time around probably the only consistent one really is international speedway is right near the bottom for all three caverns of Erebon right near the bottom for two but i've got it quite high up relatively speaking uh yeah there's really no commonality between any of these uh, and yet despite all that when you look at the averages they're pretty close uh 6.25 for me 6.53 for zap and your commodore for the one that they contributed and exactly the same for lemon users 6.53 so overall on average we rate these games almost identically even though when you look at them compared one to another um they're pretty much all over the place one thing that is worth noting though is that if you look a little bit more closely you can see i've got galaxy birds pitfall and willow pattern all in a little block there and so have zap and they've also all got the same score of 60 percent so i could put them in the order and they'd tally up completely so actually maybe they're not too far apart after all in some cases and although the rating the ranking from top to bottom might put them in a, an interesting order comparatively they're actually quite close in a lot of cases i mean galaxy birds 6.1 60 percent 5.6 they're pretty close international speedway 5.6 49 percent 5.9 um it's just when you put them in order of score from best to worst that they do kind of mix up a little bit so there you go that's the end of another review comparison video and obviously i'll do another one when i've reviewed another 10 games two of which i've already done so i'll go back to game reviews and other bits and pieces pretty soon let me know in the comments if you've got any thoughts about this video thanks very much for watching and i'll see you again soon